Hello, today we are going to review the Prime Print uh, InLab Cam workflow. Uh, so when you first come into InLab Cam 22, you'll notice that all the uh, machines at the top will be noted that are connected to your unit. Um, so you'll see that CERC Prime Mill and Prime Print have now been added. When it comes to the Prime Print cases, if it's an integrated workflow, meaning it's coming from CERC or InLab, it will populate in the list that you see here. However, you also do have the option to import items. Uh, the InLab Cam is fully um, open to be able to import things like STLs, ExoCAD construction files, etc. Uh, so you do have the functionality there. However, for this particular demonstration, we're going to move forward with an integrated workflow. So on the bottom there, if I were to select that one arrow there, that would just move forward um, to the next step where I can arrange the actual job itself. But part of the beauty of the InLab Cam 22 is the fast forward option, which I've just selected here. What the fast forward option does is save a lot of working time as it pertains to nesting a case for printing you'll see that I'm now directly in the produce stage. If I was connected to a printer at this point in time, I'd essentially be able to go ahead and hit start and ensure that I have the proper cartridge and the material carrier and have my prime print box uh, inserted into the printer itself. Uh, so here I've got several analyzing tools where I can see the quality of the supports I have uh, that the system has automatically placed for me. I can basically look at air bubbles or any basins that might collect a little bit more residue uh, for from a washing perspective and a curing perspective. Uh, and then I can even see here that the uh, system has not supported any forbidden areas such as the surgical site, etc. So it's a really nice way to really save a lot of working steps in the case lab software by by using that fast forward option which takes you directly in the produce stage however I'm going to back up just a, a step here and I'm going to go to the arrange stage if I had gone through the motions of kind of individual steps at a time uh, the next step would be the arrange where I would be able to do things like the restoration positioning however when I'm in the positioning stage I want to showcase here that the system has defaulted to do optimum quality okay so optimizing uh, optimizing the quality is assuring that you're going to get a much uh, better print overall so just overall the best uh, possible fit and everything like that now what you've seen here is i've changed it to optimize footprint so optimize footprint is going to of course going to take a little bit longer in terms of printing because you are seeing more layers here however it is going to uh, allow me to print maybe more on the actual build tray the last option is optimizing the height so this would be more if you're looking for speed. Now again, when we look at optimizing speed, it will unfortunately mean that we lose a little bit of accuracy. So you do lose some microns there. Um, so I'm just going to show you here, I'm going to basically uh, basically put it to the optimized quality, which is what it defaults to. And then I'm going to actually add a few more of the same job in, uh, which I will change to optimize then footprint and height for speed and uh, optimizing the footprint to get more prints in one uh, go. Uh, just so you can see basically how it looks in the produce stage. So here on the right, uh, the left hand side I'm just adding a couple more of the same case just so that you can see the differences between the three nesting options. So what's really nice about the InLab Cam 22 is it does save you a lot of working time, right? So other cam softwares, when it comes to printing, still a little bit more manual manipulation required. However, with the InLab Cam, it's very intuitive and user-friendly to be able to do a lot of this work for you. So I've got one that's set to optimize quality, which is of course what it defaults to when you're using the um, fast forward option. However, now I've changed one to optimize height. So that's gonna be a speed setting. So it's going to lay it a little bit flatter against the build tray, obviously meaning less layers. So it's going to be a little bit more optimum in terms of uh, efficiency. The last option is optimizing uh, the height. Um, so that is going to, or sorry, optimizing the footprint, apologies. Uh, what that's going to do is that's going to allow me to fit more on a single uh, printing job. However, it's adding more layers. So it's actually going to take a little bit longer because you'll see that's much taller when it's vertically placed as opposed to when it's positioned closer to the build tray itself. So here I'm gonna look through those analyzing tools once more, just so you can see basically the difference that it can make when you are changing the type of nesting. So here we've got wall thickness, that's more to do with the design itself. So we're seeing any thinner areas that might be of a concern from the printing perspective. Um, so then the next one is quality of support. So we can see here that based on the supports itself, we're getting good quality restorations or um, jobs that we're printing. And then the basins and air bubbles, that will change based on how you have it nested as well. So it's important to note, you know, are you gonna have 
have more kind of reserved resin potentially sitting there, uh, obviously contaminating your alcohol bath a little bit faster and maybe not getting a full cure. Uh, and then we can see here supporting forbidden regions, right? So obviously when it comes to optimizing the footprint with the height, you do lo lose a little bit of ability there because it might not have a choice but to support an area um, where the surgical site is happening. So that might be a concern obviously uh, prior to printing that you might want to consider uh, in terms of repositioning or moving those supports when needed.